The controversy surrounding smart meters in this province continues tonight as BC Hydro is starting to install them in different parts of BC. And there are many people who are speaking out against the new power measuring unit. Dana Hutchings joins us now with more in tonight's Checkpoint. Dana. Scott, 1.8 million smart meters are being installed in homes and businesses throughout the province over the next year and a half. And many people still aren't convinced they're safe, citing privacy concerns and even a health risk. Dean Stoltz looks at the issue. If BC Hydro or their uh, contractors want to install a smart meter on my house, they have to come to me first. Jim Smith is just one BC resident who's gone to extra lengths to make sure a BC Hydro smart meter isn't forced on him by securing his current analog meter behind a locked cage. I question why our government and why a Crown Corporation feels that they have the right to come onto my property, my sanctuary, my home, and tell me that they're going to expose me to another level of radiation without my consent. The installation of smart meters is an important upgrade to our electricity grid. BC Hydro says it plans to change all 1.8 million old electricity meters in BC with new digital ones that transmit information about usage via Wi-Fi technology. Everyone should have one by the end of next December, but people like Jim Smith still aren't convinced they're safe. And he's not the only one. His Nanaimo neighbor just up the road has his old meter locked up too. My information is that it's a violation of my rights and uh, I will test the waters if need be. But BC Hydro denies any safety risk, adding the levels of Wi-Fi emissions are below acceptable standards. We're working with Health Canada, with Measurement Canada, working with the Centre for D Disease Control in this province, working with health practitioners. And everything we have, all our scientific evidence, shows that these are well below the, the, the lowest, the safest levels anywhere in the world. Opponents also disagree with the business case that will see BC Hydro spend $930 million on the transition. The expenditure of a billion dollars to replace a functioning meter uh, with a meter that has a, a shorter lifespan, only 20 years as opposed to this one's over 30 years. I mean, this is still working. Why replace it? It's a more efficient way of, of measuring the system, providing uh, optimization to the system and providing benefits to our customers. It's leading some people to wonder if BC Hydro will use the new system to increase the rates when it sees customers using the most electricity. Throughout this period, time of use is not on the agenda. Certainly if time of use is, if, if there is any consideration for time of use in the future, that's something that would have to go to the BC Utilities Commission for consideration. BC Hydro says those with blocked meters like this will be bypassed for now, but it hopes everyone will eventually join the new system. And tonight's checkpoint question, what do you think about smart meters? Are you concerned or is the controversy overblown? You can tweet us, check underscore news, on Facebook at facebook.com slash checknews or checkpoint at checknews.ca by email. And Scott will be back later with more responses and we'll talk to a UVic professor who will analyze smart meters and compare them with other devices we use every day. All right, sounds good. Thanks a lot, Dana. Thanks, Ed. More on the smart meter story in this province as many BCers are fighting the new power measuring unit. That and much more coming up after the break. And we'll keep you up to date on that story. Uh, Tony Parsons also will have more tonight at 10. They are being installed in cities and towns throughout the province, and they are highly controversial. We're talking, of course, about smart meters. Dana Hutchings looks at the... <laughs> When it comes to smart meters, there are three main areas of concern. First off, there's the cost, which is $930 million to implement. But what's even more controversial is the privacy issue. Currently, BC's Privacy Commissioner is investigating. The concern is that information collected by the device breaches personal privacy. The question is, can the system be hacked? Another major concern is the health effects. The World Health Organization says the effects of smart meters could possibly be carcinogenic. The risks remain unknown. So how do smart meter emissions compare to other devices? Let's break it down. Like it or not, it's out with the old electrical meters and in with the new digital smart meters in BC. So how do they work? They have to communicate with some central point to gather the information and uh, that's done by radio. Dr. Peter Dreesen has studied smart meters at the University of Victoria. He says you have to look at three things, power, distance and time. 
And the combination of power, distance, and time makes a dosage. And just like a drug overdose will kill you, a radio overdose might also kill you. Looking at power, distance, and time, how do they compare to other devices? Let's look at a microwave oven. The power is very high, it's a thousand watts or so, and the distance is very small, it's right inside, and the time can be quite long, a few minutes, and then you cook it. So that's a problem. Cell phones may be more of an issue. Low power, but they might be used for an hour or two a day, but they're very close to you. I hold it next to my head. And so that's a problem, potentially. Dr. Dreesen suggests wireless internet and laptops might be a better comparison to the power emitted from smart meters. Your Wi-Fi is probably going all the time if you're browsing the internet or streaming videos, whereas the smart meter is only broadcasting perhaps a minute a day. So therefore, the dosage is very small. Bottom line, Dreesen says, as with anything, there are risks. Are you personally concerned about smart meters? I'm not, no. I'm using my wireless laptop all day long. I sit in my uh, living room and I browse the internet and do my work and uh, there's radio waves there and I accept that as uh, part of life. I think the risk of the radio waves is much, much less than the risk of me walking across the street or driving my car to work every day. And our checkpoint question tonight, what do you think about smart meters? Here's what some islanders had to say. Well, I think wireless technology is uh, advanced enough that uh, I have full faith in it. As long as they're more accurate than BC Hydro generally is, that'd be great. Uh, I like it just because, uh, you know, you want to save energy, obviously, right? And I think that uh, it'll, it'll make people do that. I'm from Australia, and uh, uh, we already had them over there for years. And, yeah, there's no problem at all. I just don't think it's entirely fair that people don't have a choice whether or not they want the waves um, going into their houses. You know, if there is concern, then we should be educated on it. I'm not in favor of them. I uh, feel between the, the added cost to all of us and also the potential health risks, I really think they're a bad idea. Privacy is a fallacy. We all carry these around with us and the radiation from this is going to be far in advance of that. And here are some of your responses from social media. Siobhan Bibb says they are an unacceptable risk and one that other areas of North America are already seeing adverse health reactions to. Doesn't sound like something I want nailed to the side of my house. Diana Elliott cites waste of money and lack of privacy. If it's not broken, don't mess with it. Find other ways to use the millions of dollars to lessen the cost to consumers or other ways of catching abusers of the system. And Joe Carr has a different view. I'm all for smart meters since they will empower me to monitor my electricity usage. The people who oppose them because they broadcast over wireless frequencies obviously don't understand physics. Exposure levels are exceedingly low. And one more point, I mentioned the World Health Organization classifies smart meters as a possible carcinogen. Well, Dr. Dreesen also notes that on that list, coffee and paint fumes. And that's tonight's Checkpoint.